In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to join or merge data frames in R. And so we'll first start by focusing on how to do what's called a horizontal merge or join. And this is simply when you join two data frames together that have different sets of variables, but they have a common linking variable or key variable that you can use to match the cases within those data frames. And so we'll focus, focus first on that, and then we'll move on to what's called a vertical join, which is where you have the same variables in two data frames, you're just going to add cases or combine the cases from those two data frames, as long as those two uh, data frames have perfectly matched variable names. Okay, so you should be starting in RStudio. You should have a console window here open. Let's open up a new file, R script file. This is our script editor here. I'm gonna do a quick save as, and I'm gonna save this to override an existing file called test. Click save, it already exists, that's fine in my particular case here. And so what we're going to be doing is joining, merging data, or we can say data frames in R, okay? And so let's start with our first steps as always, and I'll quickly move through these. If you have any questions on setting your working directory or reading in your data, then by all means, please check out those specific tutorials that cover those in more depth. Okay, so let's set a working directory. And so I'll use the setwd function. I know my working directory folder off the top of my head. It's our workshop here. And you can see that it's actually already set here, but let's just go ahead and run that. Make sure, okay, great. And remember our working directory is where our data files are saved. And for this particular, Tutorial here, we're gonna be working from these two data files here, perf data with a capital P and a capital D and pers data with a capital P and a capital D. And we're gonna be working on first doing a horizontal merge or join using these two data frames. So let's read in data. I'm going to name the first one PD and this is for personal, the, the pers data, um, data file that we'll be reading in. So I'll use the read underscore CSV function and then the name of it is pers data and make sure you include that csv file extension and remember because we're using the read underscore csv or at least that's what i'm choosing as my read function here um, this comes from the reader package so the name of the package is reader so i'm going to use the library function from base r to access that package and then i'm going to read in this first data frame here using the uh, read underscore csv and i'm naming this this data frame object PD. Um, and actually, you know what? I'm gonna name this because I know the second one is called perf data, so it'd also be PD. I'm gonna do this, pers D for pers data, okay? Click run, read this in. We can see, check it out in view by clicking your global environment here. We read it in, great, I'm gonna save. Now let's read in the second one. I'll call this, per, uh, I'll call this perf D for performance data here. And we'll use the same, function here from the reader package, which is read underscore CSV. And this time it's perfdata.csv. And remember, you need to get these file names exactly as they appear here in your data frame and make sure you get the .csv extension here. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. Okay, so now we have perfd. Let's take a look at that by clicking at perfd, then what we call the object in our global environment here. Okay, here we have performance data. Now, if you look at these two data frames, what you'll notice is both of them have one variable in common. It's the ID variable, which in this case is a unique identifier variable. And so as you can see, we have case 153. In this case, a case is an employee. This entity has um, with ID number 153. We see that in the perf, the, the performance data set here, as well as the pers or the personal data set here. So we can see that turns out to be Alejandro Sanchez. And we see that this is gonna be how we can actually link or match the cases here. So we'll want to do a horizontal join where we make sure that Alejandro's data gets, for personal data gets matched with Alejandro's performance data here. So they'll appear on the same row in the merged data frame, okay? All right, so the next thing that we are going to do is let's use the merge function from base R. This is the first option. When I say base R, I mean that it's already default when you download R software, these functions will be available. So we'll use the merge function to merge these two uh, data frame objects here by that ID variable. Use that ID variable as the key variable in this case, the linking variable. 
Okay, so we need to first come up with a name for our new merge data frame. I'm gonna be super creative and call this merge df1. And we use the left-handed arrow here to say that we're now going to name this new data frame that. So anything that appears to the left of the arrow is what we're naming it. And the name of the merge function is just merge all lowercase, merge. And so as the first argument, we just enter one of the data frame objects that we named here. So pers data will be the first one. As the second argument, let's do the perf d for the performance data. But now here comes the key part, which is for the third argument, we need to use this by argument and in quotation marks and within the quotation marks, so after we do by equals, we need to put the exact name of that key variable. So I'm gonna come down to my console and just make sure I get the exact name. So let's, perf, let's do perf d for example. So I'm using names, perf d is the argument within the names function. The names function is come standard with base r. Okay, here you can see the ID variable is ID lowercase. I'm gonna copy that so I can paste it exactly here because R is case and space sensitive, okay? Um, and then also I'm gonna finish up with this argument that is all equals true. And what I'm saying here is I wanna do a full join or merge, meaning that I want to include all of the data, all the rows of data, so unique cases that appear in this first data frame that I've listed here which is persd, as well as for the second data frame, which is perfd, I wanna include all the unique cases here. Even if one of the data frames doesn't have the same cases, unique cases that the other does, it'll still include everything. And so I'll show you what this looks like here, because you can clearly see that there's only six rows for the perfd data frame, and there are nine rows here, okay? So keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and run, okay? And what you'll see is now we have our merge data frame here in our global environment. We can click here, or we could have typed view with a capital V with the name of that new data frame object. Okay, so now we've, we've merged, we've done a horizontal merge, congratulations for us. And we can see that this is what I mean by a full join here. So you can see that the data frame objects here that we have um, and we have here that there's some NAs and NA in R means missing data. And so what you see here is that with these data frames is that we have, uh, we've included those people. So this is Ronald McDonald, John Smith and Jane Doe, IDs 154, 155 and 165, even though they are missing data on the second data frame. They, they aren't present in the second data, data, data frame. We don't have their performance data. We can include them here. This is the most, I think, conservative way to do this, to retain all possible data. Now, um, watch what happens though, if I copy this and I twink that last argument in the function and I do what would be considered to be a right join. So this is the right variable here, it's the, or the right data frame, it's the second data frame. So this is the X data frame, this is the Y data frame. So the Y data frame or the second one you, you list here and within the function would be your right. This would be your left data frame. So if we do a right join, so this would be right as in Y, so X, Y. Um, so all dot Y equals true. If we tweak that and we click run and we override the existing data frame we created here, you'll notice now we've kicked out those cases where we had missing data for Alejandro Sanchez or uh, rather for um, the folks that it was these folks, Ronald McDonald, John Smith, and Jane Doe, who did not have performance data. So we don't see them here. We see the number of rows is down to six here, okay? And alternatively, you could do an all X, and this would be a left join um, if you wanted to um, focus more exclusively on retaining those data for which people have full cases for the left variable, or in other words, the X variable here, okay? And the reason I'm explaining this is it's gonna make more sense when I show you this other way that we can do a join or a merge when we get to using a function from the dplyr package, okay? So now let's use the join functions from the dplyr package, okay? And so to use the dplyr package, presumably you've already installed the dplyr package recently, or hopefully, if you haven't, be sure to run this line of script here, install.packages and dplyr in quotation marks here. 
And I've already recently updated dplyr here, very recently, dplyr. And so I'm just gonna use the library function to access it so I can check out the functions and check out this package so I can access its functions, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do here, and the first way I'll show you is using it using with pipes. So we'll use the pipe operator, which is from the Magritter package, which is actually dplyr is built on Magritter, okay? And so what this is, is that we're gonna forward information from a data frame object or from one function to the subsequent function. And that's what a pipe does, okay? All right, so first what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do as I did before and create a new data frame name. I'm gonna call this merge df2 because we're using a different approach here. Use the left-handed arrow here to note that that's going to be the new name. And then here I'm going to first list the name of the, the left or the X or the uh, data frame that we wish to join, okay? So it's pers d, and then I'm gonna use the pipe notation. So this right here is our pipe, the percentage sign, greater than sign, and percentage sign, okay? And then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna first do a full join. So there's a function from the dplyr package called full join, okay? And actually make sure that, and oh, I did run that, good, good. Okay, so now we've got the full join function here. And then we first are gonna name as the first argument that second data frame object, okay? So just perf D here. So here's the left one, here's the right one. In other words, X and Y. And then we're gonna use the same by argument here as we did with that merge function from base R. And we know that that linking or key variable is ID. Okay, and by the sheer name of this function, it's telling us we're doing a full join. So this is equivalent to this that we did up here when we set all equals to true. Okay, so let's go ahead and click run here. Click on the data frame name here, and you'll see that it's the same outcome. Okay, we retain all nine people, even the people with missing data in that, that uh, right data frame there. Okay, all right. So let's now see how we would do this if we wanted to do just a right join where we only retain those cases that have data from the right data frame. So here's the left data frame, here's the right data frame. Let's copy this line of script, paste below. Okay, so this is gonna be a right join. Real simple. Set a full join as the name of the function, we change it to right underscore join here. So from full underscore join to right underscore join. And let's click run. Let's check this out again. The name of the, the data frame object is merge df2. And you will see that here we have, um, it's going to be only six rows here. And we kicked out the people that had missing data for the right data frame here. So that's a right join. Now, if we wanted to do a, uh, a left join, all we do is use the left join function from the dplyr package. If we wanted to do an inner join, which is essentially only keeping those people that have data in both data frames. So it's not an or, it's an and. They have to have data from both data frames, both the left and the right data frame. We would do this. Okay, so that's, Pretty simple. I recommend using the merge func or the, the join functions from dplyr as I'm just showing you here because you can use pipes with them. Now let's do it without pipes, okay? And so if we wanna do this without pipes, um, the notation is very similar to what we saw above using the merge function from base R, okay? And you can do it either way. So let's do the exact same name. We'll just override the existing one. We'll call this data frame object we're creating it's gonna be the join or the merge data frame, merge df2, use the left-hand notation to name it. And what we'll do is let's just do a full join here. Okay. And as the first argument, we're just going to do what we would refer to as the left data frame. So pers d, and then as a second argument, perf d. So this is the right data frame. In other words, x, y, left, right, okay. So left data frame, right data frame. And then we do by equals and the name of that linking variable. So as we saw, this is the linking or key variable here, which is ID and it's lowercase, okay? 
And so if we highlight this or click somewhere on that, that row there, that line, click run, you will see that we have done the same thing. So let's check on the updated merge DF. And remember this time we did a full join, so it should be back to having nine cases. Great, there you go. It's all set there. And let's say that you instead, I'm gonna copy that. Oops, cop, highlight, copy. Next line, and I'm gonna paste. And I'm gonna do, let's say I wanna do that uh, inner join here. Let's practice doing inner join. Then you just type in whatever function you want, whichever of the four merge functions that I've shown you that will be most applicable. So let's click run. And you'll see this does an inner join. So it only retains those cases for which there are data available in both data frames um, and for each particular case, okay? So that's how you do a horizontal merge using either the merge function from BASAR or the join series of functions from dplyr. Again, I recommend using getting comfortable using the dplyr package, uh, package as well as the functions within it because you can use pipes and uh, a little bit faster and so forth. Okay, so now let's do a vertical join or merge, okay? So to do this, I'll actually show you if this might be new to you, but what I'm gonna do is create a couple data frames from scratch. These are toy data frames, they're meaningless, but it will illustrate this idea of a vertical join where we're gonna take two data frames that have the exact same variables and just stack them. So we're just gonna add cases. They have the exact same variables, but different cases, okay, within them. So let's call the first data frame DF1 for data frame one. Um, that's what I'm gonna name it using the left-handed arrow. I'm gonna use a function called data.frame from base R, okay? And what this allows you to do is to create a data frame. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new variable called ID. Okay, this will be the unique identifier. And then I'm gonna use the C function to list, to create a vector of values. So I'm just gonna say, this could be a small data frame here. Um, there's just gonna be three different ID numbers, ID one, ID two, ID three here, okay? So that's the first variable. Let's say the second variable is going to be let's say age, so that's the name of the variable, equal to, and I'll use the C function again, and let's say um, it says 21 year old is for ID one, and ID two, so this is thinking of these, this is row one, this is row two, this is row three, so row one, 21, let's say the next person's 23, the next one's 45, okay? And then let's add a third variable, and this one will be, um, let's see, current, which let's say currently employed with the company is what that variable stands for, and use the C function again to combine these values into a vector. In this case, it's a variable. And so let's say the first person is current, and because we're using creating a character variable here, the values need to go in quotation marks, comma to separate them. So let's say the next one is no, not current. And then finally, the third row or case is going to be currently employed, okay? So this is the first data frame object here we're creating. So let's go ahead and highlight that and click run. You could, let's go check it out here in our global environment. Let's click on it, DF1, create, cool, we created a data frame. So ID one, two, three, here's the ages we listed and whether or not they're current employees. Pretty cool, right? All right, so now let's create a second one. Let's just copy this line here and just quickly adapt it. And again, this is only for demonstration. Let's call this DF2 for the second data frame. So we're tweaking that there. And then let's say the sequence continues here where now we have three different employees that are four, five, and six are the unique identifiers for them. And let's say this first person whose ID number four is 43, this next one's 33, and the next one's 23 years old in terms of the age. So notice we're keeping the exact same variable names because we're going to do a vertical. They need to have the exact same variables in order to do a vertical merge like this, okay? And then finally, in terms of current, let's just say it's the same pattern here, these three employees. It's yes, no, yes, okay? So let's go ahead and click run here. So now we have the second data frame. Let's go to our global environment, click there. Okay, now we have these two data frames. Their key variable is, or rather we don't have a key variable here, but we have the exact same three variable names here. ID, age, current, spelled exactly the same way. That's really important. So how are we gonna do a vertical merge? Well, okay, so what we're gonna use is what's called a, the rbind function. And first let's come up with 
a new data frame name. We'll call this merge df3 for our new data frame that we're creating that's going to be merged. So we'll use the left hand arrow again. And then our bind is the name of the base R function. Okay. And so all we need to do is list the first data frame followed by the second data frame. Okay. And as long as all the variables match, we should be good here. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay. So now our name of the data frame here is merge df3. Let's click here in our global environment to view the data. Look, now we've stacked these or we've done a vertical merge. So that's how you do a vertical merge in R. So in this tutorial, I showed you how to do a horizontal merge using the merge function from base R, as well as a horizontal merge using the join functions, series of functions from the dplyr package. And then finally, we finish up doing this vertical merge here. And you learned how to create a data frame from scratch. Thank you very much.